Ourselves at all times. Touch guns. Good luck. Charlie Suarez, you saw him wearing the Army shirt. Well, he was actually promoted to Staff Sergeant in the Philippine Army as a result of winning the WB Asia title in April of 2022. And this young man, well, he comes from a boxing family. His father was a fighter. His grandfather was a fighter. The Korea fighting spirit lives on. And Tim, he dropped ropes on Conceição. He dropped Jose Enrique Vivas. He really gave Adam Lopez a great fight when he was undefeated in the bubble. He just can't get a win against these top guys. Uh, a lot of those fights could have went either way. Yes. I mean, and, and some people in the arena felt that he won those fights, to yes, be sir. honest with you. So, you know, nothing you can do about the judges. When the, when the decision happens, that's what it is. You just need to make sure you do more the next time. And that's what he said. I'm intent on finally getting over that hump and getting that win against a top fighter. This is undefeated Charlie Suarez out of the Philippines. Got quick hands. And also you gotta, you know, you gotta reassess your performances as well. That's extremely important. You know, if sometimes you make fights harder than what they should be. And you see Coria now actually boxing. The kid, the young man can box. He come from the school with, with Antonio Diaz and Joel Diaz. And now he's with, you know, Robert Garcia. However, he knows how to box, but at the same time, his heart gets in the way. Yeah. And he just wants to slug it out once he gets hit. But if he stays smart, if he stays smart like he is right now, I mean, he can do some damage. He's got a long frame, good jab, very educated, got some pop on his shots. You know, great variation with his offense as well. Goes well down to the body. And Suarez is solid. I mean, he's an Olympian. So you know he knows how to fight. And just because, just put it this way, just because you're a great amateur doesn't mean that you're going to be a great pro. However, you can tell Suarez has that pro style already. He likes to sit down on his punches, see him grounded, his feet got big legs. And he, he's got some pop. Nine yes, knockouts and 16 does. victories. Seven knockouts and, and 15 it, wins. And it's going to be in the left hook. It's going to come with the left hook. If he's going to hurt Corey, it's going to be with that left hook, Suarez. You see him trying to set it up right there with an uppercut, trying to get him a yeah. left up and then coming around with the left hook. And then every now and then you'll see Suarez, he'll just sneak the left hook behind as you're throwing that right hand or sitting still in front. Good right hand down to the body from Suarez. Good setup. Great punch variation from Suarez early on. Yes. Against the very game, Coria. Ooh, good defense there from Coria, and then he gets clipped by the second. I left just, hook that uh, Suarez let through. Corey better keep his right hand at home. That left hook of Suarez is something else. Oh, nice right uppercut there from Charlie Suarez to close up the opening. Hey, he's only, what, 20 years old now? Hey, my goodness. Uh, he, he's doing a great job in his family, his father, it's a team effort, and they're doing a great job in developing him and keeping him actually humble at the same darn time. But yes, he's phenomenal skill. Looking forward to seeing him later tonight. It's such a pleasure to talk to as well. His yes. demeanor, his humility. The entire family. Though. Yes. Valiant entire... has done an amazing job with the Valiant Five young men yes. who are all fighters. All of them, except for one, uh, I think, who has yet to make his pro debut at age 18, but will soon. Uh, Abdurrahim, I believe, they're all professionals in every sense of the word. I admire, I'm, I, I actually admire the father, the father, man. I admire him very much. Quick look combinations, at combinations from Suarez here. Just closing the space with combinations like that, that's beautiful. You know, eventually, ooh, that right hand hurt him. You see that right down to the spleen. Right there on the spleen of, of Coria. Oh, nice left uppercut that, there from Suarez. You called it. That. I'm telling you, watch that left hand. You know, he will, he'll, he looks, it seems like he's breaking away, but then as soon as some action is about to start, he'll leave with the left hook, surprising you with a different punch from a different angle. That time, it was a nice, it looked like the most by uppercut, but it might have been a 45. Half hook, half uppercut. The Oscar De La Hoya special. Yes. Louis Correa, he's trained by Robert Garcia, sparred 
Raymond Murataya and Lidolfo Delgado for this fight. So he's got elite sparring. Robert could not be here due to a family commitment. So Felipe Campa and Louis Correa Sr. are working the corner. So what Louis, Louis, what's happening with Louis is, is that uh, Correa is, is he's jabbing and he's and he's stuck on his front foot after his jab. Ooh. That was a nice uppercut by him as well. But he's stuck. So he's heavy on the front foot when he jabs. And then he steps, you see his back foot as he probably crosses his feet. Yeah. He's there for a split second, a little bit too long. And that's why you're seeing Suarez come with his combination. So watch as he jabs and he steps steps to his left. Watch his back feet, how he crosses it. You saw a lunging left hook there from Suarez. There he is. And did you see the, did you see the reaction? Yep. He was stuck on that front foot. And Suarez, and Suarez is smart enough to see that. And it's not very much variation with, with uh, Correa's offense either. He's just shooting a jab straight down, down, down the middle, and that's it. Nothing else attached to it. No jab hooks, no one-twos, no one-two-threes, just a single jab. There it is again, single jab. Guido Vianello gets his opportunity against F.A. Ajakba in tonight's co-main event right here in Corpus Christi, Texas. In that co-main event, so it's very, it's very important for Guido to win this fight tonight against F.A. Jaguar. Important for both fighters to actually win this fight. See, some people might call this sportsmanship or whatever, but I call that brother-in-law right there. I, you you got to <laughs> stop that. I'm going to call every fighter out when I see it happens. Stop doing that. This isn't a sparring session. You're in there trying to hurt the other man. You know, no, you, you didn't do a good job. You're in there trying to take you. I'm trying to take you out of your element. <laughs> so I just had to show you folks that own that. Stop brother-in-law on each other and go in there and get in there and do what you need to do. And then you got to go to the body like Suarez is doing here. Oh, nice Correa. hook right there. Nice little hook right there from Suarez, from uh, Correa. Changing it up from that jab and then just sneaking around with the left hook. There's a little bit more love to him. Yeah, a little love taps. The left hook there from Suarez. See, what, where's the level changes? There's no level changes coming from, from Correa. You know, he's shooting a straight jab, single jab right down the middle. Why don't you bring that jab downstairs as well? Just keep switching it up. You want to bring that defense down? Hit that bread basket down there. Break. I got you. Break. Break. More love. More love given by both guys. Nothing from other handshake. A high five. Hello. Good job, <laughs> brother. Good job. Keep hitting <laughs> Asking Coria to throw that left hook. And instead, Suarez lands a double jab. It's good right there from Coria. Good work right there. A little low, low action coming from Suarez. He made Coria come in, kind of with a nice right uppercut. Yeah, he's sneaky like that. Yeah. He? You know, one, one minute it seems like he's not doing anything, and the next minute he just he turns it on. When you least suspect it. Okay, you got the jab, Corey. You got that working. What's next? What's the next thing you're going to do? Because if you don't do anything else, that's what happens. Suarez sneaks in behind that jab. Oh, nice right hook from Louis Correa. Tonight's main event features Jared Anderson, who's undefeated but has a unique look on his boxing career and plans for the future, which may not align with what most people think. Well, Roy Jones Jr. has all the legacy in the world, a Hall of Famer. It'll be a privilege to go into the National Boxing Hall of Fame with him on April 28th. But Jared Anderson in tonight's main event taking on Riyad Murray starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Time when we move over, move over to ESPN of the network. You know, I've, I've been thinking about Jared and 
you know, his outlook on the game. And whether I agree with it or not, I, I respect it because I, I do understand it. You don't, you don't necessarily have to love your job in order to do your job. You know, you don't necessarily have to love it. You know, I, I remember waiting tables. Um, I liked it for a little while, but then it got rough for me. But I started to hate it. Couldn't stand it. But I respected it because that's how I made a living. Right. So I showed up to work on time. I bust my butt. I waited my tables and got the tips that I needed to get to be able to pay my bills. So with Jared saying what he's saying, I get it. You know, as long as he respects the game of boxing, as long as he trains and does the things that he's supposed to do in training to get prepared for his fights, you don't necessarily have to love the game. It's okay. The difference, though, is that Jared has the cheat code. He has that lotto ticket in his hand, and it's up to him whether he wants to cash it or not. He has a fast track to greatness, to big money, heavyweight money, yeah. that you didn't have, that a lot of people don't have. You have to... Get you have to take the long route, and if he does things right and commits for the right amount of time and for the right reasons, he can accomplish exactly what he told Roy Jones he wanted. I, I agree, but his 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 motivation, as he told us, is money. I've seen money Mayweather. That's his. That was his motivation too. Yeah. And now, if a championship has happened to come along to be able to get that money. I'm sure Jared doesn't mind that, but that's not what he's after. He's after the money in the sport. And just to let everybody know, that's what we do it for. Oh, yeah. You know, all the other stuff is attached to it, but mainly it's to make a living and change your family's history of life. That's what it's about. So I understand, I understand the young man in that aspect, in that aspect, in that aspect alone. But boxing is a very jealous sport. Yes, it is. there from Suarez but that may not have been the best right hand that landed in this round as we are now halfway through this scheduled eight rounder let's take a look at what Luke landed his right hand you see Coria walking in right here he shoots that jab and I told you the single jab is gonna come every single time no variation no doubling up no changing levels with the jab as well and when you see that being an experienced fighter like Suarez, we woo, we we, we got a hug, love like a hate love relationship, brother. I'm gonna <laughs> let you know right now. <laughs> Took one of three from the legend, and good luck. You know, it, got nothing but respect for him, baby. Absolutely, he, that pack out made me a rich man. Round five of scheduled eight rounder and been all Charlie Suarez, the Filipino who's 16 and 0 with nine knockouts, part of the Filipino army. Yeah, he's counter punching really well, and he's and he's again, you can see his technique and form. It hasn't faltered just yet. He's real, still snappy, snappy with his punches, quick on the trigger. But he's he's been the counter puncher. Every now and then he'll be the aggressor, but a lot of times he's just making Poirier pay for his mistakes. The predictability of Cora, you mentioned that earlier on in the fight. It's no change of pace from him, and, and Suarez was able to pick it up early on, although he gets clipped with a nice jab there from Lou. So now, what now, since Corey is getting out boxed, now he's trying to change the tempo up, he's trying to put more pressure, and he's trying to throw more punches now. And that's going to open, he's going to open himself up more to be hit by Suarez. There you see, quick combination from the Filipino, and Corey says, Bring it on. You see the heart, the dog in, 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 in Korea. I mean, he, it's not like he's not trying to win. He is. He's just getting outgunned. See, nice as far shot. as landing early with the lead right and then following up with the straight left. Yeah, you know, uh, looking, out on this, looking at this fight on paper, I, I, I initially thought it was going to be a war toward the toe. But the fact that Korea came in with a different game plan trying to box, it hasn't turned into that. And now you have Suarez boxing as well as he's boxing. It's more of a tactical or technical battle now. His body work for Korea. 
part of it might be the maturity of Louis Correa, who's now a father, and you, you see things differently sometimes when fatherhood comes along. Uh, that's all added motivation, Bernardo. Yeah. You know, we talk about father time like it's a bad time, bad thing. No, I mean, he hasn't done anything in the sport. <laughs> so that's that's all fuel and motivation at the end of the day. But when you get when you get a, a, a bank full of money and you, and you you got, you know, a beautiful house and cars lined up in the, in, in the driveway, that's when father time can get the best of you because now you got to find a new motivation. You have everything you've ever wanted. Package from Suarez right here, going down, digging down to the body right there, taking advantage of the elbows being down from Correa. Nice little short left hook right there around the guard of Correa. He's getting out positioned. Um, Suarez is just a better fighter. Honestly, he's just a better fighter. He's better, a better fighter technically, tactically. He's being smart in there. He's quick, good footwork. You know, you see him, he's in good positioning all the time. Good position. He steps back, he fires. Steps back and he fires. There's no answers. There's nothing that Correa can do or he hasn't figured it out yet and his corner don't know what to tell him. So that motivation is just, hey, come go out there and, and give it all you got, kid. They see the same thing we're seeing right now. It's one thing to motivate, but Correa needs answers. He needs the how to do it. Not just go do it. They said change it up. Change it up. You're doing the same thing over and over. Now, whatever that means, <laughs> that's what it means, I guess. But, you know, not the greatest instructions in the corner. But if I was in this corner, I would tell him, focus on the body, kid. That's what I would tell him. His feet are too fast. You got to get close. You got to come in. Don't come in behind the single jab. Come behind the double jab. Change levels with the jab. Once you get inside, you need to open up a can down to the guts and make sure you stay close. Don't pull straight Ooh. back. And get caught like that with that left hook from Suarez. Yeah, but he doesn't need to fight in the center of the ring. He needs to fight to have this on against the ropes. He needs to bag this guy against the ropes and he needs to work. He had him there, but he, he, didn't, he, he didn't close that exit. And Suarez got back in the center of the ring. Now it's Suarez walking him back and High five, once again. High five. That's like brother-in-law. That, that's showing compassion. That's a weakness Is in the it? fighter. Yeah, that's, a weak, that's a weakness in the fighter, compassion. That's why you were a dog. Move, move. Got it. It's either you eat or he eats, right? That was your mentality. That was my mentality, man. Um, you can be a, you can be a lot more talented than I am. However, I was determined, man. I had to feed my family, and, and nothing was going to stop that. Oh, you see the bloody nose that Corey is fighting through here in the sixth round. Just too slow. Step behind. You know what sucks when your opponent knows exactly what you're going to do before you do it, and he already has it. He already has it. A bag of tricks that he's looking to just set you up with. That's what that's what Suarez is doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. Watch him step back and get some. Oh, nice right hand by Correa right there. Nice shot. We know he's game. We know what we're gonna get in a Louis Correa fight, and he's gonna have to turn it on in the final two rounds. I see through film study that Riyadh has trouble with pressure you know uh, he likes to fight at a comfortable pace he likes to fight at a distance and you know he's extremely patient and defensive at the same time and he'll look to make Jerry pay for any mistakes speaking with him in the fighter meeting he said that we're gonna look to make him pay when Jerry pulls back now you know I've been that guy I've yep. been telling him that hey man that's your Achilles heel you gotta stop doing that well they're gonna be looking to expose that tonight so we shall see if he can.
That'll be our main event this evening. We're going to move over to ESPN starting at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, 9 p.m. Central. We're right here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Bernardo Osuna, Tim Bradley, and Joe Tessitor. Louis Correa has about five minutes to turn this fight around, which has seen him be outboxed and outmaneuvered by undefeated Filipino Charlie Suarez. Correa's best bet here, Tim, turn this into a fight. Not the boxing match that Suarez has been enjoying. Well, you got to be able to corner him. You got you to be able to cut off the ring. That was a good jab right there from Correa. Great timing with that jab. But as long as the fight is happening in the center of the ring, Corey is not going to have any answers. I don't care. Next see, that's exactly where he needs to be. But then you see the tactics right there. The nice little just tuck. And Ooh, what a nice Didn't I tell you about that left foot man. early on? I told you about that in the first round. That left foot just comes out of nowhere. That was perfectly timed, Tim. But again, tactics, man. He, this guy is tactical. He's technical as well. He knows he does the right thing at the right time. Suarez, he stepped in off the ropes. Smut just to smother the work of Korea, not allowing the space in between. That's smart work right there. See, it's not allowing him to extend with those hands once he steps inside. Oh, that uppercut. That was nice. He buzzed him with that uppercut. Korea heard him with that uppercut, and I don't know if he realizes that, but he needs to step on the gas right now. This is the opportunity right now to do some damage against Suarez was finally able to get inside that six inch reach advantage from Charlie Suarez. And this is the Louis Correa that we expected early on. But, but Correa has been looking for that shot all night and it finally landed for him. But he hasn't, whoa, there they left hook again. Louis Corey to throw big shots here as he slipped as he was taking a step forward. Then he gets caught with the left hook. Charlie Suarez. A good round, not sure. Look, when you start your set up punches with your jab, then you can use the same mechanics to set up those left hooks right there. Automatic punch from Suarez, turning it right over. Looked like it was going to be a jab. Corey wasn't ready for it. But this uppercut right here, I'm telling y'all know right now. Broken the chin. Left hook. <laughs> that was probably the best round for Louis Corey, and not even sure it was enough to come away with the points because Suarez landed a couple of left hooks there to even things out. But this is the eighth and final round. Good jab there from Louis Corey, who went back to the corner, and Felipe Campa was in his face saying, if you've got anything left, I need you to let it all loose here in the eighth round. He needs to he needs to let that uppercut go again. Yeah, that's a that's a deadly punch coming against a shorter opponent. You know, shorter opponents usually lean forward a bit to try to get inch a little bit closer with their punches. Yeah, Tim, but Suarez is shorter, but he's also got a six inch reach advantage. And that's why he's been able to get to Coria when Coria thought he was in the safe zone. <laughs> High five. Man. You say chocala in Spanish. Chocala. Yeah. What? Yeah, like. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a slip. That's a slip. That's a slip. It's wet in the center of the ring on that paint. It's dangerous. Take a look at it, Tim. Yeah, in the center. Yeah, I try to stay out of the. Uh, you know, I try to go around that. To be honest with you, when I would, when I would fight. And especially when it gets wet because you got the wet drip, the, the, the water dripping down from the trunks. You see their trunks full of water. Yeah. And that's what happens. So I try to keep the fight a little bit on the outside or pressing forward away from that. I try to keep my back away from that on my legs off of that. And that you see Corey say. closing the gap a lot. Yes. Better here in the final round. Keeping Suarez up against the ropes. Stop. Break. Break. I Suarez got has to I tie got up. It. There's blood now. Run. On the, the eye left now. eye of Louis Correa. I wonder sure. if that came from the punch or a head clash. Or if it's even just from his nose that the glove put it up there. We'll see. No, there's a cut there. Outside yes. part of the eye. Ooh, Ooh, nice left hook once again from Suarez. It was 
A lead right followed by a left I hook. One, two, one. Nasty. Break. I got it. Break. I got you. Man, his, his punch variation is, is freaky. It's <laughs> Suarez's punch variation is something else. Again. It's something else. He's sneaky. Subtle feints. It's all subtle, too. It's not like any, not a whole lot glaring, but it's just so subtle, and he's so quick on the trigger. It really that's is. What makes him, that's what makes him dangerous. And those long arms. Yes, and those long arms helps him as well. Oh, there it is again. Corey tried to get out and escape and just get caught with his hands dropped because of those long arms. Suarez followed him right out with, with that right hand. Good in theory at five foot six, he's supposed to have a 66. Oh, oh that's that a is going to be a knockdown. That's a knockdown. Did their feet get five, tangled? Six, we get another seven, look at it. Eight, three. See if the feet got tangled. Maybe no. it did. I don't know. That was the reaction that you got from Suarez. I don't think it's going to be enough for Louis Correa to keep him off balance. Let's take a look at actually what happened here. Moving, moving laterally here. Got hit with a shot and he goes down. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here inside American Bank Center, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Nathan Cantu and Lucy Rogers both score the bout 77-74. Ruben Carrion has it 76-75. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Charlie yes. Kingswood Suarez. So he does get the victory. By unanimous decision, that 76-75 card seemed a little too tight, Tim. They were giving uh, Corey a lot more credit than yeah. we yeah. Uh, Look, I just look at it this way. The right man won at the end of the day. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Charlie Suarez with the 17th.